morning and welcome to the studio this morning. Um, I'm finally getting around to doing a video of a budgerigar. I think they, they're called parakeets in the USA, aren't they? So um, I'm going to show you a, a, a simple budgerigar watercolour. And um, basically I've printed off a couple of my uh, previous ones just to give you an idea of sort of the style that I'm using in them. Again, my, my style isn't the only style. Um, let's start with these small ones here. Um, that one's mostly yellow, but even in the yellow, you can see that there's quite a tonal contrast in his feathers. Some of those yellow feathers are quite muted and almost browned uh, there to give him a bit of to give his body a bit of shape. Then in this one, it's more it's more evident in this one than in this sort of violety purple one. The left hand side, you know, I've committed that to shadow, you see there, and it's lighter on the right hand side. Then there's this sort of like crown, a little cap of blue violet on his head. And I've preserved those whites, you know, watercolour is all about preserving the whites, isn't it? Because we don't, uh, if you're a pure transparent watercolour paper, if you're hardcore, you don't use white paint. So you need to save the whites in areas if you want to use that approach. Then this other one, a uh, little playful budgie here, the darks are sort of more under his uh, under his belly, suggesting that the light's coming from above. Okay, but in all of them, and this, this is the last one of the small ones, in all of them, you'll see there's quite a range of tones from very pale blue to some mid blues and then very dark blackened blues um, in this particular one. Because without contrast, it's quite hard to build a 3D shape. You need to commit to some really dark darks and some really light lights and have uh, a few tones in between. Artists use a grayscale that's from 0 to 9 in general and a 9 is plenty enough tones to, to render something realistically. Then for a, a much more, this one took me quite a long time, it took me a few days to do this one because there was a lot of, a lot of work, um, fine soft detail on the plumage and, and in the faces there. So if you can just see there's quite a lot of um, soft edged work around his beak there there's a little bit of grey going then into the whiter part of the dome of his head to suggest a curve and that was done with dry brush then I've got some much harder edges where his markings are I wanted those to be very hard edged and visible so again in this bird there's a contrast of soft uh, gradations going from the white plumage there to the grey that's quite a soft gradation and then sort of harder ones where you want to indicate those sort of um, famous budgie markings, you know, those, those little uh, curved sort of crescents they've got on the side of their faces. OK, so, so it's all about contrast, either a sharp contrast as there from that yellow to the dark and yellow or a more gradual contrast from this sunlit green shoulder going into a soft grade into the darker green as he gets into the dark on the right hand side and in watercolour that's the hardest thing one of the hardest things to manage um, is this gradation um, in other media it's a little bit easier because other media blend more readily with watercolour it's a bit more tricky okay so the, the budget we're going to do today is this little one um, he's quite a playful one he's quite splashy and um, here's the drawing Okay, but before before I start again, as you know, if you watch my videos a lot, I like to look at things in black and white and grey before I get going. This is the same image with all the colour stripped out. He's actually flipped in reverse, but don't worry about that. And as you you can see more clearly now, <clears throat> just how dark some of those patches are if you strip the colour out. See, it's very dark under there, and then very dark on that side of the head, going into lighter. So this is a bit of a road map to see where my mid-tones are, my real darks are, and where there are patches of white. Okay, this is a three-tone image. I stripped the colour out in Adobe Photoshop, and then I used the filters. I used the posterize filter, and I selected three. So I just chose three tones. 
you can get the same sort of effect with a black and white photograph of whatever image you've got. Okay, So you can photograph it on your iPhone, take the colour out and heighten the contrast and that will help you see more easily. It will train your eye to look for those real dark passages. Okay, So, so let's get on with the actual, the actual painting now. But before I do anything I want to get my um, incense and candle going. It's a bit of a grey day here in Wales. It's quite drizzly. Just been out with the dog and it's that fine misty rain. And I don't know about you but I feel having a candle, a, f a flame, is really nice uh, in the studio. It gives a bit, a bit of energy into the studio before we do any creative work. And this is my last stick of incense so I better get and order some more today online so I'll just pop that out of the way because it does tend to smoke up the screen otherwise okay so the colors for this budgie we're going to use some fresh I'll give you the colors in the description and on screen as well there'll be text now um, cerulean blue Windsor yellow some French ultramarine blue and possibly a bit of Windsor Violet and then we'll use a bit of raw, uh, maybe raw sienna in the beak. <clears throat> okay and to get the, the slightly the slightly grey patches here and there it'll be a bit of burnt umber mixed with some French ultramarine blue. So let's have a look at this. So to start off I've got my brushes, I've got a, a few flats and a few rounds in a size that I feel is sort of appropriate to the image I'm doing, which is quite a small image. Right, it's not, not a big painting. This again is a little study. Okay. I just zoom in on that. So I'm getting a bit closer. Right. That should be nice and sharp. So the first thing I'm going to do is moisten the whole bird. <coughs> With clear water, I moisten the paper so that when I put my washes on, everything will be nice and soft and will blend in the early stages. This paper is Fabriano Artistico. It's an Italian paper. It's 100% cotton rag and it's £90 or 200 GSM in weight. But any surface will do, any watercolour paper will do. I always suggest using cotton rag paper as opposed to wood pulp paper because it's, it's just better and it receives the washes really well and it looks beautiful. You can use a hot pressed surface, a cold pressed surface or you can use a rough surface, it's up to you. I'll just need to switch now to a smaller brush, so I've got like a size zero here. This is actually um, an acrylic brush, doesn't matter. Acrylic brushes are, qu are quite useful in watercolour. They're good for um, lifting out passages because they're quite springy and robust and they suck up the colour if you want to create a highlight somewhere. So I'm wetting these tiny little knobbly feet because at the beginning I just want things to all run into each other a little bit. Let's re-wet that tail because it's probably dried out in the last few seconds. I um, get up and I tilt my body and head so that I can see from the light of the window how everything is looking, whether there's enough moisture on the paper, whether I've missed any gaps. And if I can just see, try and show you. There, see that shine? That's what you want, okay? When it's shining like that, that's great for dropping in some colour. So what we'll do first is we'll have a little bit of um, French Ultramarine Blue. And a tiny speck, a speck, a little forensic amount, actually that's too much, of uh, burnt umber, just to make a, a little bit of greyed blue. Let's 
sort of have that shadow on that left hand side there of his head just very gently just gives it a bit of takes the whiteness uh, kills the white on the paper and gives his head a little bit of a, a boundary there okay all right now next of all i want to pop in a little bit of french ultramarine blue see that French ultramarine blue and a tiny bit of Windsor Violet and I mean a tiny Windsor Violet is such a strong colour it will bully any other colour see how strong that is and it's just a speck I've used and we'll put a little bit of that into the face as well and into some of the tips of the uh, feathers there right now I'm going to move to a bigger brush I'll say Yes, this is a um, sort of half inch flat brush moisten that and I'm going to pick up now some uh, sorry some Windsor yellow and I'm going to pick up some cerulean blue let's mix those together sort of hot limey type of green so sort of turquoisey well actually it's more of a turquoisey no it's gone green now Let's get some more cerulean blue to bring it back to the blue side. Yeah, that's about it. Okay, we'll plop that on. Now I'm going to rinse my brush. This is nice and clean. And I'm just going to pick up now some Windsor yellow. Pure Windsor Yellow on its own. And just place a patch of it there, here and there. So that the colours are sort of mingling on the paper a little bit more. I'm not over mixing them on the palette, you know. And then finally, I'm going to get a bit more uh, French ultramarine blue. Not very, not very strong, and a little bit of Windsor violet. Again, don't don't worry about the exact shade of these colours, you know. Just want to get uh, an effect. I'm going up in that little V, you know, where the white plumage of his head uh, is sitting there. So I've got quite a few individual patches of colours there now. So I want to unify them all a little bit more with just pure cerulean blue. So I'm picking up some cerulean blue. Sorry, there we are. Right, okay. And this is a quite dilute, but there's enough guts to it. There's a, there's enough pigment, you know, to make a make a make an effect. Let's have a bit of that green. Right, so that's the blue. I'm going to pop that on top now because those colours that I put on first have had a chance to sort of get a grip in the paper so they will show through a little bit they'll all have their own uh, quality and character you know because showing through and let's have a few little stipples of this turquoise coming out uh, into his tail feathers <clears throat> and maybe a bit of that turquoisey blue to unify the head a bit more there's just a tiny speckle over the crown of his head there oh, right that's coming together a little bit it's, it's blending okay so let's just tip him see there's still a shine on there he's still he's still got a bit of moisture there so we'll just tip it give it a few seconds to run those uh, patches now will fuse very gradually 
millimeter by millimeter and just holding the board practically at 90 degrees to the table and giving it a few uh, seconds, half a minute to blend in without going in with my brush um, because once you go in with a brush, the brush has got moisture and it could start to puddle, you know, and disturb everything a bit too much. That's why I like to tip my board. Okay. So he's had a bit of time to fuse there now. All right. And there's a bit of yellow showing through and there's a bit of violet showing through. So that's what I wanted. I wanted this sort of random colour as per my original birdie right so I'm going to let that dry because that will dry a lot paler than than it is at the moment okay so I'm going to let him dry um, I'll probably hair dry him I wouldn't recommend you do that I do it for videoing because it, it takes too long to wait for him to dry but when you hair dry it does sort of diminish the brilliance of the paints a bit too much so I'll see you in the next section Hi again. Well, I've just had a little break and I've come back to um, start uh, work on the budgie. And I decided to let him dry naturally because I want to explain something to you. Um, he now, he looks bone dry, okay, for all intents and purposes. You know, there's no, there's no shine on that paper anymore. And it looks bone dry, okay. But if you use this part of your thumb, the soft fleshy part there, and just gently... Put it on the paper if you sense that that paper feels cooler than the adjacent uh, paper or if you sense any coolness in there it's probably because there's still a bit of residual paper in the depth of the fibers there's still a bit of moisture in there okay so what can happen is if we start painting on top now with a liquid wash it can start to seep in and fuse with whatever moisture's left under there hidden to our naked eye and cause us backgrounds, cabbages, cauliflowers, right? So what I'm going to do is just give it a very gentle hair dry, holding the hair dryer about, you know, 10 inches away, use it very gently and just get that moisture finally off. So I'll just put this on pause while I do that. Okay, so that's bone dry now. And if I go like that with the base of my thumb again now, I can't feel any coolness in there. So, so we're safe. I, this is just a bit of... Um, <coughs> extra sort of check-in that I like to do to make sure the painting is ready to carry on working on. So now I'm going to do the, the grade sort of legs, little legs. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit of uh, French ultramarine blue, pick up a little bit of the Windsor Violety dilute wash that's alongside. Uh, a bit more blue perhaps. We want just a very soft, oh that's a bit too much. Uh, if it's too much, you know, just Drag some away to a new place on the palette and add some more water to it to dilute it down. Then a tiny bit of burnt ember. Right now that's gone, see that's gone too brown now. This is what it's like, it's like a ping pong match, back and forth, back and forth, trying to get the balance of your colours right. That's, you get that, you get that judgement with time. Okay, uh, just practising, messing about, playing with your colours. That looks grey enough to me. So I'm just going to pop this in uh, to his little feet. I'm going to put this wash all over. This is on dry paper now, so I'm working wet on dry, okay? And I'm rubbing and rubbing and rubbing at this blue sort of cuff, his little cuff of feathers on his leg, to dissolve that a bit so that the, the grey of the feet sort of blends up into that cuff so there's no jarring uh, edge uh, transition from one colour to the next. I just want that to float up into there for now. That softened that edge, you see. Okay, then let's work on this one. Can you see, see that okay? See, that's close enough. Right, so let's do this little one. And the tiny little claws, well, you can just indicate those with this small zero brush. Very fine for this tiny, tiny work. You know, you can paint this budgie any size. You know, if you, if you work big, just scale it up and work big. 
everyone seems to have this sort of optimum size uh, with which uh, to which they work that can change over time you know sometimes you change your style and you your preferences whatever size works for you okay so i've got some soft gray all on there right now as i'm looking at it it's it's practically now dry because that's such a small passage the moisture's gone into the paper but there's still a tiny bit of moisture in there and I want to capitalize on that now to drop in some shadows so I'm going to use a bit of French ultramarine blue with not too much water and a bit of French um, burnt ember to make a stronger gray to put some shadows in those little feet that's gone a bit brown. Let's have some more blue. Right, that's definitely darker than what I've put on already. So I'm going to just drop that at the base of these knobbly feet. This one might have dried too much. Yes, it has. So I'm going to have to soften that myself. Let's just continue with the moist one for now. Get these claws in while we've got some really dark and a bit of shadow up on the right hand side of the legs as well. You'll find that the paper, when you're painting small passages like this of a few millimetres depth, the paper, uh, the paint will dry really quickly and you'll have to soften these hard edges yourself by adding a bit of water, which I'll show you in a second. Let's get these claws really finely tapered rather than blunt. They look a little bit stumpy. So I'm just tapering that out very finely with this zero brush. Right now, as you can see, let me zoom in on this. This one has softened more than that one. Those dark greys I put on are hard edged. They're soft edged there, right? Let me just, I just want to put a bit more depth in this one while it's still a bit moist so that it has a soft blend up into the feet and a few little curves like this to show that scaly, budgy uh, skin. Just a few. You don't have to do tons of detail. Right, for these tiny feet now, this is quite a fussy job, so I'm going to zoom right in. See, I'm liking this foot much more than this foot because these hard shadows are not what I want. I want it to be more natural like that. So with my clean, I've just rinsed this size zero brush. I've rinsed it and I've flicked it, but I'm not wiping it in a flannel because I need that little bit of moisture that's in the tip. And then all I'm going to do is come at it from above. And just touch into those very, very narrow grey shadows and just rotate the brush very gently to encourage them to blend in to the first soft wash of grey that we put on. It only takes a few uh, rotations. Just stay on it until you can see that hard line dissolving before your eyes. There, that's a little bit better, isn't it? Okay, and now while it's in this slightly moistened state, I can just pick up some more of that dark that I had before and just put some more in again and just re-emphasise while it's still moist and it will flare up more softly and look more natural, those shadows again. All right, so I think, I think that's enough fussing with those feet. Okay, let's go on to the head now, right? So what I want to do now is get the beak in and the beak, I'm just going to pick up a little tiny bit of uh, raw umber, sorry, raw sienna. And maybe put a bit of that grey that I've just used for the feet into that. Just to sort of tone it down a little bit. I don't want it too brightly yellow. That'll do. So pop that uh, beak in. And now the, the detail on the uh, side of the face, there are some little uh, blue sort of stripes. So I'm going to use French ultramarine blue 
and a little bit of Windsor Violet and not not too runny so I'm, I'm moving away from that big puddle to a drier part of the palette to keep this little wash um, not so runny and there in his face you can see these little stripes coming down from his eye you know and those there so I'm just going to put those in And I want some thin and some broken. I don't want them to look too contrived or too uniform. You know, he's a bird. I want an organic sort of look of it. And then I'm going to hold my brush parallel to the paper and just drag a bit of scratchy blue texture up into those feathers there. And a little bit, very lightly, on his crown. And a little bit coming up from his nostril, from his beak, from his nostril. Little bit of blue there, taper it away. And that's about it. And there are a few, few more just coming around his eye and off from the eye, like that. There, and I'll leave it at that. Now he's got some really strong blue cobalt and <coughs> French ultramarine blue markings as well. So let's get a stronger blue, adding a little bit of that uh, violet mix I used. That's a stronger blue now. So let's put these, um, got a few little darker markings here and there, and there's one big patch which comes about there. All budgies have this sort of marking on their face, don't they? And I'm going to paint the, uh, the nostrils in now with that French ultramarine blue. I'm making these blue crescents like that, very fine. Let's just put an arc around his eye there and another crescent here and there. I'm going to rinse my brush <coughs> and again come at it from above and just touch in and rotate to soften that blue up into those uh, curved nostrils that he's got because it goes from dark blue at the base by his beak up to practically white near the top there and again let's go in with a little bit more French ultramarine blue at the base to emphasize that contrast it's right at the base there and uh, finally a little bit more in that V between those two nostril openings so it gives a very fine detail there and just dragging again I want a bit of a stronger bluey uh, head for him like that okay now to do his eye we're just going to use very strong a gooey mix of uh, burnt umber and French ultramarine blue. Not much water in that, it's quite viscous. We just want a, a, a dark, you know, this, this, this will look black enough, okay? So let's, I'm going to leave a tiny little speck of white like that and then paint everything else black. And that little tiny speck of white should be enough of a highlight then I'm going to paint a little black line in between some of those blue lines I put above his eye. Because if you can put a few crescents around the eye, it gives it a setting rather than it being a stuck on eye. Okay, then let's go into the nose now. There's some little black specks there in his nostrils. They're bleeding a bit because the blue is still a bit damp. And let's do it like a W, up and up. So starting there and we go up. In the middle 
and very finely taper it off to the outside. Okay. And then we want some raw sienna mixed in with this dark colour that I've currently got on my brush and we'll have a bit of a shadow side on the right side of the beak. Leave the left hand side a bit a bit paler. Alright. Then just for repetition I'm going to take some of this dark brown and just put a few patches of that on his left hand shoulder and then drag them and blend them away like that. Then I'm going to rinse my little brush, flick it and again use this tiny moist brush to just blend what I just did in. Just use the flat of the brush and blend it in. So you've got a seamless passage. You've got the little bit broken there and then it's seamlessly blending in there. Let's soften that beak a bit. Okay, I'm just going to brush around the eye with a bit of this warm browny tone just to bed things in because the lines around the eyes looked a little bit scratchy. So I'm just softening everything in. Okay, so he's coming now, coming now. Right, so we need some, now we need some work on the tail. So I'm going to go for um, my flat brush. I'm going to pick up some of this green, which was Windsor Yellow and Cerulean Blue. And let's just have a few little... Um, like calligraphic markings, as my one of my favourite artists, Frank Webb, likes to use that term, and I think it really fits it. It's like sort of writing. Uh, they're quite distinct markings on the tail. And let's go in strongly now with some almost neat cerulean blue. See how much darker that is now. Some neat cerulean blue and a little bit of French ultramarine blue because these are the final darks I talked about early on you know when I had this um, grey image okay I want some real strong darks now so let's commit so let's put some real strong darks under there the base of the tail let's have some right over here just for contrast and under his belly where you know, the belly would be going out of the light, so he'd be darker under there. And let's have some darks under that white ruff of his fe facial feathers, because we want to make those look whiter, so we've got to go darker to do that. All right. And I'm going to pop a bit of that strong cerulean blue on top of that facial marking I did as well. And a few on the nose. These now are the final touches to give our bird a bit of zip so that he doesn't appear too flat and safe, okay? Um, I'm just going to put a few little tufty like feathers sort of sticking out on his, there, on his legs there. Leaving some of the previous wash showing for contrast. And I think I'll stop there. Um, actually, no, let's push it, let's push it a bit further. Let's push it a bit further because see how strong those darks are there? Let's push it a bit further. Why not? This is the only way you learn is by seeing how far you can go before it all tips over the edge. Alright. So let's get some more French ultramarine blue with some more uh, cerulean blue. And let's have a bit of our Windsor Violet. Yeah, that's really strong now. Bit more cerulean blue. You know, colour mixing is, is so frustrating as a beginner, I know. The only way to get a handle on colours is to play and mix mix them and play around with them. You know, if you don't if you don't play notes on a musical instrument and just have a toot, you're never going to know notes. It's the same with paint. You have to just 
have some mess in about time. Yeah, now that's what I wanted. That's that's a darker blue. Let's get a few of those uh, accents. These are dark accents. Uh, this is the sort of artistic term. They're dark accents. And they usually come right at the end of the painting when you've got all your major tones uh, already done. These are the final flourishes, okay, that bring your painting hopefully a bit forward, brings it forward off the page. I'm putting a bit of that in the eye, why not? A bit more on that blue facial uh, marking that he has. And some of these striations as they come down in crescents from the side of his face. Right, so he's got those on. Let's do the belly again. Let's get that belly. But I feel in places they need to be softened, okay? Because some of them are a little bit too hard. Let me just get him at the angle for you. He's coming alive a bit, but I think I want to just blend in. Some of those dark patches a bit more so i'll get my size three brush size three rinse that really moisten it really well flick it now i've got this moist brush so let's just blend in a bit more some of these dark accents and we'll call it a day so i'm just blending in under the belly tapering it away to nothing like that Rinse my brush again because now my brush is full of blue. And let's taper this lovely shadow under the wing a bit more. Just so just I'm right on the edge of this passage. I'm not going in the centre of it. I'm right on the outer couple of millimetres and I'm just coaxing it out and flicking it over so that it blends away. And I, I'm going to just fudge with a moist brush in amongst that shadowy side of the left hand of the face there okay i'm picking up some dark blue and going under that eye i just needed that right so i'm going to stop okay so i hope you've enjoyed this little bird budgies are great you can paint them in any color as you can see you know if you squint at him if you really squint down you can see that there are some real dark kicks under the wing on the left hand side under his belly, under that part of the tail, okay? And they contrast with the general mid-tone and then the white highlights uh, that have been left and the white of his face. So, so we've got some contrast and that's all I ever try and aim for in my paintings is some contrast. Okay, so if you'd like the, um, the outline for this or any information, email me at alisonfernalart at hotmail.com and I'll send them to you. But... Uh, as with all my videos, copyright, if you do this, you know, keep this uh, in your own home. Uh, if you want to give it to a friend, that's fine. You can't sell it. If you put it in an art exhibition or you uh, send it into a publisher, you know, that's definitely copyright. So you can't do that. But you can give it as a gift or you can, um, you know, use it for your own educational purposes. Similarly, if it gets posted on Facebook or Twitter or anything like that, um, that's copyright infringement as well. So this birdie um, is for sale on my Etsy website. So I can't afford to have him out there, um, you know, being offered around the place. So I hope you understand that. If, however, you paint him in totally different colours, uh, maybe you add a little extra wing on that side, or you change his stance in some way, you know, change him so that he's not quite, you know, different, then that's fine. But to copy as is, obviously, you know, that's a no-no. Okay, so once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.